Walther Wilhelm Georg Both, the 8th of January 1891 to the 8th of February 1957, was a German nuclear physicist who shared the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1954 with Max Born. In 1913, he joined the newly created Laboratory for Radioactivity at the Reich Physical and Technical Institute (PTR), where he remained until 1930, the latter few years as the director of the laboratory. He served in the military during World War I from 1914, and he was a prisoner of war of the Russians, returning to Germany in 1920. Upon his return to the laboratory, he developed and applied coincidence methods to the study of nuclear reactions, the Compton effect, cosmic rays, and the wave-particle duality of radiation, for which he would receive the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1954. In 1930 he became a full professor and director of the physics department at the University of Gießen. In 1932, he became director of the Physical and Radiological Institute at the University of Heidelberg. He was driven out of this position by elements of the Deutsche Physik movement. To preclude his emigration from Germany, he was appointed director of the Physics Institute of the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute for Medical Research in Heidelberg. There, he built the first operational cyclotron in Germany. Furthermore, he became a principal in the German Nuclear Energy Project, also known as the Uranium Club, which was started in 1939 under the supervision of the Army Ordnance Office. In 1946, in addition to his directorship of the Physics Institute at the KWIMF, he was reinstated as a professor at the University of Heidelberg. From 1956 to 1957, he was a member of the Nuclear Physics Working Group in Germany. In the year after Both's death, his physics institute at the KWIMF was elevated to the status of a new institute under the Max Planck Society and it then became the Max Planck Institute for Nuclear Physics. Its main building was later named Both Laboratory. <laughs> <laughs> Education Both was born to Friedrich Both and Charlotte Hartung. From 1908 to 1912, both studied at the Friedrich Wilhelms Universität today, the Humboldt Universität zu Berlin. In 1913, he was Max Planck's teaching assistant. He was awarded his doctorate, in 1914, under Planck. Career Early years In 1913, both joined the Physikalische Technische Reichsanstalt PTR, Reich Physical and Technical Institute, today, the Physikalische Technische Bundesanstalt, where he stayed until 1930. Hans Geiger had been appointed director of the new laboratory for radioactivity there in 1912. At the PTR, both was an assistant to Geiger from 1913 to 1920, a scientific member of Geiger's staff from 1920 to 1927, and from 1927 to 1930 he succeeded Geiger as director of the Laboratory for Radioactivity. In May 1914, both volunteered for service in the German cavalry. He was taken prisoner by the Russians and incarcerated in Russia for five years. While there, he learned the Russian language and worked on theoretical physics problems related to his doctoral studies. He returned to Germany in 1920, with a Russian bride. On his return from Russia, both continued his employment at the PTR under Hans Geiger in the Laboratory for Radioactivity there. In 1924, both published on his coincidence method. Then and in the following years, he applied this method to the experimental study of the nuclear reactions, the Compton effect, and the wave particle duality of light. Both's coincidence method and his applications of it earned him the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1954. In 1925, while still at the PTR, both became a private dozen at the University of Berlin, which means that he had completed his habilitation, and, in 1929, he became an Osserordenlicher Professor there. In 1927, both began the study of the transmutation of light elements through bombardment with alpha particles. From a joint investigation with H. Franz and Heinz Pose in 1928, both and Franz correlated reaction products of nuclear interactions to nuclear energy levels. In 1929, in collaboration with Werner Kohlhorster and Bruno Rossi, who were guests in both's laboratory at the PTR, both began the study of cosmic rays. The study of cosmic radiation would be conducted by both for the rest of his life. In 1930, he became an Ordenlicher Professor Ordinarius Professor and Director of the Physics Department at the Justus Liebig Universität Gehring. 
That year, working with Herbert Becker, both bombarded beryllium, boron, and lithium with alpha particles from polonium and observed a new form of penetrating radiation. In 1932, James Chadwick identified this radiation as the neutron. Topic. Heidelberg In 1932, both had succeeded Philip Leonard as director of the Physikalische und Radiologische Institut Physical and Radiological Institute at the University of Heidelberg. It was then that Rudolf Fleischmann became a teaching assistant to both. When Adolf Hitler became Chancellor of Germany on 30 January 1933, the concept of Deutsche Physik took on more favor as well as fervor, it was anti-Semitic and against theoretical physics, especially against modern physics, including quantum mechanics and both atomic and nuclear physics. As applied in the university environment, political factors took priority over the historically applied concept of scholarly ability, even though its two most prominent supporters were the Nobel laureates in physics Philip Leonard and Johannes Stark. Supporters of Deutsche Physik launched vicious attacks against leading theoretical physicists. While Leonard was retired from the University of Heidelberg, he still had significant influence there. In 1934, Leonard had managed to get both relieved of his directorship of the Physical and Radiological Institute at the University of Heidelberg, whereupon both was able to become the director of the Institute für Physik Institute for Physics of the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute für Medizinische Forschung KWIMF, Kaiser Wilhelm Institute for Medical Research, today, the Max Planck Institute für Medizinische Forschung, in Heidelberg, replacing Karl W. Hause, who had recently died. Ludolf von Krell, director of the KWIMF, and Max Planck, president of the Kaiser Wilhelm Gesellschaft KWG, Kaiser Wilhelm Society, today the Max Planck Society, had offered the directorship to both to ward off the possibility of his emigration. Both held the directorship of the Institute for Physics at the KWIMF until his death in 1957. While at the KWIMF, both held an honorary professorship at the University of Heidelberg, which he held until 1946. Fleischmann went with both and worked with him there until 1941. To his staff, both recruited scientists including Wolfgang Gentner (1936–1945), Heinz Mayer Leibniz (1936), who had done his doctorate with the Nobel laureate James Franck and was highly recommended by Robert Pohl and Georg Jos, and Arnold Flammersfeld (1939–1941). Also included on his staff were Peter Jensen and Erwin Funfer. In 1938, both and Gentner published on the energy dependence of the nuclear photo effect. This was the first clear evidence that nuclear absorption spectra are accumulative and continuous, an effect known as the dipolar giant nuclear resonance. This was explained theoretically a decade later by physicists J. Hans D. Jensen, Helmut Steinwittel, Peter Jensen, Michael Goldhaber, and Edward Teller. Also in 1938, Mayer Leibniz built a Wilson cloud chamber. Images from the cloud chamber were used by both Gentner and Mayer Leibniz to publish, in 1940, the Atlas of Typical Cloud Chamber Images, which became a standard reference for identifying scattered particles. Topic. First German cyclotron By the end of 1937, the rapid successes both and Gentner had with the building and research uses of a Van de Graaff generator had led them to consider building a cyclotron. By November, a report had already been sent to the president of the Kaiser Wilhelm Gesellschaft KWG, Kaiser Wilhelm Society, today, the Max Planck Society, and both began securing funds from the Helmholtz Gesellschaft Helmholtz Society, today, the Helmholtz Association of German Research Centers, the Badischen Kultusministerium Baden Ministry of Culture, IG. Farben, the KWG, and various other research-oriented agencies. Initial promises led to ordering a magnet from Siemens in September 1938, however, further financing then became problematic. In these times, Gentner continued his research on the nuclear photo effect, with the aid of the Van de Graaff generator, which had been upgraded to produce energies just under 1 MeV. When his line of research was completed with the 7 Li P gamma and the 11 B P gamma reactions, and on the nuclear isomer 80 bridge, Gentner devoted his full effort to the building of the planned cyclotron, to facilitate the construction of the cyclotron, at the end of 1938 and into 1939, with the help of a fellowship from the Helmholtz Gesellschaft, Gentner was sent to Radiation Laboratory of the University of California today, the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory in Berkeley, California. 
As a result of the visit, Gentner formed a cooperative relationship with Emilio G. Segre and Donald Cooksey. After the armistice between France and Germany in the summer of 1940, both and Gentner received orders to inspect the cyclotron Frederic Joliot Curie had built in Paris. While it had been built, it was not yet operational. In September 1940, Gentner received orders to form a group to put the cyclotron into operation. Hermann Danzer from the University of Frankfurt participated in this effort. While in Paris, Gentner was able to free both Frédéric Joliot-Curie and Paul Langevin, who had been arrested and detained. At the end of the winter of 1941–1942, the cyclotron was operational with a 7 MeV beam of deuterons. Uranium and thorium were irradiated with the beam, and the byproducts were sent to Otto Hahn at the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute für Chemie, Quick, Kaiser Wilhelm Institute for Chemistry, today, the Max Planck Institute for Chemistry, in Berlin. In mid-1942, Gentner's successor in Paris, was Wolfgang Riesler from Bonn. It was during 1941 that both had acquired all the necessary funding to complete construction of the cyclotron. The magnet was delivered in March 1943, and the first beam of deuteron was emitted in December. The inauguration ceremony for the cyclotron was held on 2 June 1944. While there had been other cyclotrons under construction, Bothes was the first operational cyclotron in Germany. <laughs> Uranium Club The German nuclear energy project, also known as the Uranverein Uranium Club, began in the spring of 1939 under the auspices of the Reichsforschungsrat RFR, Reich Research Council of the Reichserziehungsministerium REM, Reich Ministry of Education. By 1 September, the Heereswaffenamt WA, Army Ordnance Office squeezed out the RFR and took over the effort. Under the control of the WA, the Uranverein had its first meeting on 16 September. The meeting was organized by Kurt Diebner, advisor to the WA, and held in Berlin. The invitees included Walther Both, Siegfried Flug, Hans Geiger, Otto Hahn, Paul Hartig, Gerhard Hoffmann, Joseph Matauch, and Georg Stetter. A second meeting was held soon thereafter and included Klaus Clusius, Robert Doppel, Werner Heisenberg, and Karl Friedrich von Weizsäcker. With both being one of the principals, Wolfgang Gentner, Arnold Flammersfeld, Rudolf Fleischmann, Erwin Funfer, and Peter Jensen were soon drawn into work for the Uranverein. Their research was published in the Kernphysikalische Forschungsbericht Research Reports in Nuclear Physics, see below the section Internal Reports. For the Uranverein, both, and up to six members from his staff by 1942, worked on the experimental determination of atomic constants, the energy distribution of fission fragments, and nuclear cross-sections. Both's erroneous experimental results on the absorption of neutrons in graphite were central in the German decision to favor heavy water as a neutron moderator. His value was too high, probably due to air between the graphite pieces with the nitrogen having high neutron absorption. But there were so few staff or groups that they could not repeat experiments to check results. By late 1941, it was apparent that the nuclear energy project would not make a decisive contribution to ending the war effort in the near term. WA control of the Uranverein was relinquished to the RFR in July 1942. The nuclear energy project thereafter maintained its Kriegswichtig important for the war designation and funding continued from the military. However, the German nuclear power project was then broken down into the following main areas, uranium and heavy water production, uranium isotope separation, and the uranmaschine uranium machine, i.e., nuclear reactor. Also, the project was then essentially split up between nine institutes, where the directors dominated the research and set their own research agendas. Both's Institute für Physik was one of the nine institutes. The other eight institutes or facilities were, the Institute for Physical Chemistry at the Ludwig Maximilian University of Munich, the Wa Versuchtel testing station in Gottau, the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute für Chemie, the Physical Chemistry Department of the University of Hamburg, the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute für Physik, the Second Experimental Physics Institute at the Georg August University of Göttingen, the Argeselschaft, and the two, Physikalisches Institute at the University of Vienna. Topic. Post WW2 From 1946, to 1957, in addition to his position at the KWIMF, both was an Ordenlicher professor, Ordinarius professor at the University of Heidelberg. At the end of World War II, the Allies had seized the cyclotron at Heidelberg. 
In 1949, its control was returned to both. During 1956 and 1957, both was a member of the Arbeitskreis Kernphysik (Nuclear Physics Working Group) of the Foch Commission to Forschung und Nachwuchs Commission to Research and Growth of the Deutschen Atomkommission (DATK), German Atomic Energy Commission. Other members of the Nuclear Physics Working Group in both 1956 and 1957 were, Werner Heisenberg Chairman, Hans Kopfermann Vice Chairman, Fritz Bopp, Wolfgang Gentner, Otto Haxel, Willibald Jenschke, Heinz Mayer Leibniz, Joseph Matauch, Wolfgang Riesler, Wilhelm Walcher, and Karl Friedrich von Weizsäcker. Wolfgang Paul was also a member of the group during 1957. At the end of 1957, Gentner was in negotiations with Otto Hahn, president of the Max Planck Gesellschaft (MPG), Max Planck Society, successor of the Kaiser Wilhelm Gesellschaft, and with the Senate of the MPG to establish a new institute under their auspices. Essentially, Walther Both's Institute für Physik at the Max Planck Institute für Medizinische Forschung in Heidelberg was to be spun off to become a full-fledged institute of the MPG. The decision to proceed was made in May 1958. Gentner was named the director of the Max Planck Institute für Kernphysik (MPIK), Max Planck Institute for Nuclear Physics, on the 1st of October, and he also received the position as an Ordenlicher Professor, Ordinarius Professor, at the University of Heidelberg. Both had not lived to see the final establishment of the MPIK, as he had died in February of that year. Both was a German patriot who did not give excuses for his work with the Uranverein. However, Both's impatience with national socialist policies in Germany brought him under suspicion and investigation by the Gestapo. Topic: <laughs> Personal. As a result of his incarceration in Russia during World War I as a prisoner of war, he met Barbara Below, whom he married in 1920. They had two children. She preceded him in death by some years. Both was an accomplished painter and musician. He played the piano. Topic: <laughs> Honors. Both was awarded a number of honors. Member of the Academy of Sciences of Göttingen. Member of the Academy of Sciences of Heidelberg. Corresponding member of the Saxon Academy of Sciences, Leipzig. Grand Cross of the Order for Federal Services 1952 Knight of the Order of Merit for Sciences and the Arts 1953 Max Planck Medaille of the Deutsche Physikalische Gesellschaft 1954 Nobel Prize in Physics, for the coincidence method and his discoveries made therewith. Both received half of the prize, the other half was awarded to Max Born. 19,178 Walter Both, asteroid named after him. Topic. Internal reports The following reports were published in Kernphysikalisch Forschungsbericht Research Reports in Nuclear Physics, an internal publication of the German Uranverein. The reports were classified top secret, they had very limited distribution, and the authors were not allowed to keep copies. The reports were confiscated under the Allied Operation Alsos and sent to the United States Atomic Energy Commission for evaluation. In 1971, the reports were declassified and returned to Germany. The reports are available at the Karlsruhe Nuclear Research Center and the American Institute of Physics. Walther Both die Diffusionslage für Thermische Neutronen in Kohl G12, the 7th of June 1940. Walther Both die Abmessungen Endlicher Uranmaschinen G13, the 28th of June 1940. Walther Both die Abmessungen von Maschinen MIT Ruxtunum Mantel G14, the 17th of July 1941. Walther Both and Wolfgang Gentner die Energie der Spaltungsneutronen aus Uran G17, the 9th of May 1940. Walther Both einige Eigenschaften der U und der Bremsstoff. Zusammenfassender Bericht über die Arbeiten G66, the 28th of March 1941. Walther Both and Arnold Flammersfeld die Werkungskurschnitt von 38 für Thermische Neutronen aus Diffusionsmessungen G67 the 20th of January 1941 Walther Both and Arnold Flammersfeld Resonanzeinfang und Einer Uranoberflash G68 the 8th of March 1940 
Walther Both and Arnold Flammersfeld Messungen and Einem Gemisch von 38 Oxid und Wasser, der Vermehrungsfakte K und der Resonanzeinfang W. G69 the 26th of May 1941 Walther Both and Arnold Flammersfeld die Neutronenvermehrung BEI schnellen und langsamen Neutronen in 38 und die Diffusionslange in 38 Metall und Wasser G70 the 11th of July 1941 Walther Both and Peter Jensen die Absorption Thermischer Neutronen in Elektrographit G71 the 20th of January 1941 Walther Both and Peter Jensen Resonanzeinfang and Einer Uranoberflash G72, the 12th of May 1941. Walther Both and Arnold Flammersfeld Versich MIT Einer Schichtenanordnung von Wasser und Prap 38 G74, the 28th of April 1941. Walther Both and Erwin Funfer Absorption Thermischer Neutronen und die Vermehrung schneller Neutronen in Beryllium G81, the 10th of October 1941. Walther Both Maschinen and MIT Osnutzing der Spaltung der Schnell Neutronen G128, the 7th of December 1941. Walther Both Uber Stahlenschutzwein G204, the 29th of June 1943. Walther Both die Forschungsmittel der Kernphysik G205, the 5th of May 1943. Walther Both and Erwin von Verschichtenversich MIT Variation der U und D2O Dicken G206 the 6th of December 1943 Fritz Bopp, Walther Both, Eric Fischer, Erwin Funfer, Werner Heisenberg, O. Ritter, and Karl Wurtz Bericht über einen Versuch MIT 1.5 to D2O und U und 40 cm Kohleruckstriamantel B7 G300 the 3rd of January 1945 Topic. Selected literature by both Walther Both and Hans Geiger ein Weg zur experimentellen Nachprüfung der Theorie von Bohr, Kramers und Slater, Z. Fizz. Volume 26, No. 1, 44 1924. Walther Both Theoretische Betrachtungen über den Photoeffekt, Z. Fizz. Volume 26, No. 1, 74-84 1924. Walther Both and Hans Geiger Experimentelles zur Theorie von Bohr, Kramers und Slater, Die Naturwissenschaften Vol. 13, 440-441 Walther Both and Hans Geiger über das Wesen des Compteneffekts, ein experimentaler Betrag zur Theories der Strahlung, Z. Fizz. Vol. 32, No. 9, 639-663 W. Both and W. Gentner Herstellung Neuer Isotope Dirch Kernphotoeffekt die Naturwissenschaften Vol. 25, Issue 8, 126 126. 1937. Received 9 February 1937. Institutional affiliation Institut für Physik at the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute für Medizinische Forschung. Walther Both The Coincidence Method, The Nobel Prize in Physics 1954, Nobelprize.org. 1954. Topic. Books by both Walther Both der Physiker und sein Werkzeug Greiter, 1944 Walther Both and Siegfried Flug Kernphysik und Kosmische Strahlen. T. 1 Diederich, 1948 Walther Both der Struffler BEI der Osmessung von Nebelkammerbahnen im Magnetfeld Springer, 1948 Walther Both and Siegfried Flug editors Nuclear Physics and Cosmic Rays Fiat Review of German Science 1939 1945 volumes 13 and 14 Clem 1948 Walther Both Theory des Doppelinsen B Spectrometers Springer 1950 Walther Both Die Struing von Elektronen in Schrägen Folien Springer 1952 Walther Both and Siegfried Flug Kernphysik und Kosmische Strahlen T 2 Diederich, 1953 Carl H. Bauer and Walther Both Vom Atom Zoom Welt System Kroner, 1954 Topic. See also German inventors and discoverers Topic. Notes Topic. Bibliography 
Bayerchen, Alan D. 1977. Scientists under Hitler, Politics and the Physics Community in the Third Reich. Yale University Press. ISBN 0-300-01830-4. Henschel, Klaus, Henschel, N. M., E. D. S., 1996. Physics and National Socialism, an Anthology of Primary Sources. Berkhauser. ISBN 0-8176-5312-0. Walker, Mark German National Socialism and the Quest for Nuclear Power 1939–1949. Cambridge. ISBN 0-521-43804-7. External links Walther Both The Coincidence Method, The Nobel Prize in Physics 1954, Nobelprize.org Due to Both's illness, this lecture was not delivered orally. Walther Both and the Physics Institute, The Early Years of Nuclear Physics, Nobelprize.org Walther Both Biography, The Nobel Prize in Physics 1954, Nobelprize.org Annotated bibliography for Walter Both from the Alsos Digital Library for Nuclear Issues.